Dear brothers and sisters, every year on the 3rd of October, on the evening before the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi, which falls on October 4th, Christians ever, everywhere solemnly commemorate the transitus of the holy fool, the passing of our seraphic father's soul from earth to heaven, which took place at sunset on Saturday, October 3rd, year 1226. Today is a most memorable and glorious day to all of us, and especially for all the Franciscan family. As the whole family of Franciscan order celebrates the passing away of St. Francis from this earthly life to the heavenly life. From the earliest days of the Franciscan order, the followers of Francis have gathered on the anniversary of his death to celebrate his transitus, that is, St. Francis's passing from earthly life into everlasting life. Here, in this place, we too gather to celebrate the light which Francis was to his world. However, this celebration is not only a memorial, a remembering of one who has gone before us, it is also a celebration of the spirit of Francis in our midst today, in each of us. This is a time when we, inspired by Francis, consider how we can be the light of St. Francis' life. Now, our parish priest, Father Roswin Pires, will light the candle and share this light with his co-priest as a sign of Christ's light passed on through Francis. Please all rise. Your response shall be, Merciful Father, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That Christians of every culture, race, and nation joyfully bring the gospel to the whole world, we pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That all of us as followers of Christ show compassion to people who are poor and suffering, we pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That those who serve the common good, the elected officials, 
and the public servants may serve in wisdom and with love, we pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That all who work, nurture, teach, sustain, and guide may recognize the good they do and themselves nurtured and sustained, we pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That all of us who are called to pray and contemplate may have an authentic God experience and be transformed like our Holy Father Francis, we pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you gifted Francis a light for us on our journey to you. Continue to pour out your spirit on all creation, reconnecting all in love and in the peace that you promised us, we pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. We will now play a video that depicts the life of St. Francis, followed by the transitors. Please be seated. Life of St. Francis. Francis, son of a wealthy merchant in his youth, lived a carefree, fun-loving life, enjoying the company of other young people in Assisi. However, the focus of his attention gradually changed as he experienced a number of personal encounters with the Lord in dreams, in the silence of a cave, and God touched the heart of Francis. Once, while he was riding near Assisi, he encountered a leper. He kissed the leper. Here on, whatever was bitter turned sweet in his life. Indeed, it was while he was praying in an abandoned church dedicated to St. Damien. Here, the image of the crucified Christ spoke to him. Francis, go repair my house, which as you see, is falling completely to ruin. His soul melted when his beloved spoke to him. Now, Francis, clothing himself poor, goes on preaching the poverty in and around Assisi. Holy Francis went to the lepers and lived with them, serving them most diligently for God's sake. Looking at the way of life Francis was living, many young men of Assisi followed him. He took the gospel and spontaneously opened and discerned that God is calling him for a special mission. The first work he undertook was of building the house of God. Stone by stone, Francis, with the help of the brothers, who followed him, repaired the church of St. Damien zealously and with the help and grace of God. Francis dreamed of a multiple of men coming to follow his way of life. When he saw that the Lord God was daily adding to their numbers, Francis wrote for himself and his brothers a form of life and rule, using mostly the words of the Holy Gospel. Brothers set out to Rome to meet the Pope and seek the approval of the Holy See. The Lateran gave a verbal sanction to the rule submitted, and his order was called Order of Friars Minor. Looking at Francis, his life of poverty and penance, 
and touched by his spirit, the Lady Claire was converted to God. She lived unto the advantage of many and as an example to a countless multitude. Many young ladies followed her gradually. St. Francis, being one to go on a mission journey, preached peace. He himself walked through enemy lines to meet the Sultan and brought a change of his heart. He loved so much the natures and all the creatures. He confronted the wolf of Gubbio and made his friend. Francis meditated on the incarnation of Christ. And this is seen in the live crib he prepared first at Grecio. Two years before his death, he wished to be alone with the Lord at Mount Laverna. On the day of the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, while he was praying, he felt the marks of the nails in his hands and feet, and even his right side wounded with the lance. Christ revealed in him the secret of suffering of the cross through his stigmata. Threading the path of God's mandate with alacrity of mind, Francis reached the summit by way of all virtues, and like a beaten, he was brought to perfection by the hammer of various tribulations. Things turn out best for those who make the best of the ways things turn out. With a burning desire, Francis chose best of the ways to live a life straining to be united to Christ. Thus, whatever was commenced well during his lifetime seemed to have consummated at the point of his death. Let us now affectionately recall these events of the last moments of our Holy Father, Francis's life. Meanwhile, let us ask for the grace to be more worthy followers of Francis by our lives of continued conversion and penance. With the blessing and guidance of our parish priest and youth coordinator, spiritual director, Father Rosvin Pires, the transitus is being performed for you by the youth of Our Lady of Arabia Parish. The cast of the transitus and the actors playing the part are as follows. St. Francis, played by Abner Riveredo. Rufino, played by Colin. Angelo, played by Ivan. Elias, played by Abner. Leo, played by Jeffrin. Coyer, by St. Clair's Coyer. Audio and sound setup taken care by Our Lady of Arabia Youth. Shreya, Gareth, and myself, Sharon, as the narrators. Photography done by Mr. Allen, and videography done by Mr. Siju.
On the last lap of his earthly life, when Francis was near to death, despite losing his sight, he had the burning desire to begin all over again in all humility. And though he had to moderate his austerities because of doctor's order. My brothers, till now we have done nothing for the Lord. Let us once again begin in real earnest. Yes, yes Father. Father. Father, you're sick. Thank you, Father the gift of suffering. You have helped me to carry out your will. You are welcome. Welcome, my sister death. Father, take courage. You will be all right soon. We are with you, Father. After some days, Father, your illness is becoming worse. We will bring a good doctor for your treatment. No need, dear brothers. Where is Brother Elias? I am here, Father. 
Brother Elias, please take me back to SEC. I feel God wishes me to leave this earth from SEC, where I tasted the heavenly things first a particular. Yes, Father, as you wish. We will take you to a CC. The brothers carry Francis to Assisi, where he encountered his Lord and his God. It was a place very dear to his heart, and he loved it more than any other place in the world. This place is truly holy and is a dwelling place of God. Here, when we were few, the Most High gave us increase. <coughs> Father, take care. Take. A little water. If it be my Lord's pleasure that I shall die soon, brothers Leo and Angelo, come for the glory of God. Sing to me of Sister Death. Bye. 
misery calls the brothers together who were there present and invokes upon them the blessing of God like that of Jacob and Moses in the Old Testament. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his bright face shine upon you. May the Lord to you be generous lift up his countenance and give you his peace and give you his peace farewell all of you my sons i'm hastening to the lord to whose grace i commend you all brother leo saw all these things and recognized that Francis was fast approaching the end. Kind Father, alas, your son are now without a father and are deprived of the true light of their eyes. Remember, therefore, your orphan sons whom you are now leaving. Forgive them all their faults and give joy to those present and absent with your blessings. Behold, my son, I am called by God. I forgive my brothers, both present and absent, their sins, faults, and offenses. On whom am I placing my hand? On, On brother Elias. Brother Elias, this is what I want. As the Lord multiplied my sons and brothers, now I place them in your hands. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Dear brothers and sisters, now as the hymn is sung, let us exchange the peace of Christ.
Nor did Francis forget Sister Claire, who he, who he learned was weeping. He sent a message to his little spiritual plant. Say to Lady Claire that I forbid her to cry and weep. I shall see her again. Also send a message to Lady Jacoba of Rome. Now Francis is in deep thoughts. He gradually thinks of the future of his order. He clearly foresaw the offense by which many of his brethren would betray the rule, do away with the rule, act according to their own will and wish. That is why he wished to leave them an admonition to live the rule as a covenant to love. Thus, now his soul cries from the depth of his heart. My brothers, my sisters, come listen to me. My children, the voice of your father now hear. Give your attention to my words carefully. You bless it of God and to me very dear. Great are the things we have promised the Lord, but greater by far is the promise return. It promise of us let living a cause to promise of God let how brief is the pleasure of sin and of wrong, but endless the punishment, endless the pain. How slight is the suffering this life brings along, yet ageless the glory and joy that we gain. The number of those who are caught is so Chosen a few, the Lord keeps the count of the first and the last. To each and to all shall render their due. Finally, he ordered the book of the Gospels to be brought. Bring me the gospel of the Lord and read it from the place where it all began before the feast of the Passover.
Shall we stand for the gospel? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour has come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simeon Scarlet, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied the towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know, you do not know now what I am going, what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had written to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messenger greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture, the one who ate with my bread had lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now, before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I, uh, <coughs> that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, very Reverend Father Roswin, our parish priest and all my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We are into transitus. Maybe the word is not familiar to all of us, and it's called transitus. It's a Latin word. And of course, the uh, meaning is already explained to us by Shreya, I hope. Okay. Passing a life from earth to eternal life. So we are into it. 
and i'll wish you the feast of saint francis tomorrow, tomorrow. today we participate we go through very sorrowful you know, moments of uh, saint francis uh, actually i'm not prepared since we both of us we are in tajij you know what is it? that place kajij uh, tajij for a program and we got late to reach here back but again uh, share with you few things from my memory you know francis is both he is a religious saint as well as he is a secular saint perhaps he is celebrated most out of the church he is of course a religious saint he is known as a second christ he has received a stigmata that is five wounds of christ and he has begun perhaps five orders like three orders for men where we we belong and uh, in a order for a, for a women and also for uh, lay people sfo and he has begun a lot of other uh, traditions of church like it is francis who, who began uh, the uh, the tradition of uh, making crib manger we may not know but he is the one who has begun it and every christmas we make manger or a crib in our uh, home and and the tradition began by saint francis and he celebrated perhaps most out of church now outside church he is known as a secular saint he is an environmentalist he is uh, a peace activist he is friend of hippies and uh, uh, you know um uh, he is uh, you know friend of thieves perhaps known as uh, cookie jar and he is uh, in a patron saint of merchants animals any any uh, and many more other you know patron ship he has got and you know what i feel um francis is a responsibility perhaps that is my first point to make you make to you francis is a responsibility when present pope took charge many asked them you you are not, now you are known as saint Fra uh, sorry francis pope francis and he, who is your patron many of them thought that this is uh, saint francis savior but he said no this is saint francis of assisi and it's a responsibility a responsibility to live as poor a respon uh, francis is the one who has adopted poverty as his bride and uh, uh, pope francis does it very well and he came to in middle east and not only in middle east where, wherever he goes he has got a poor lifestyle and we are into and francis has got a beautiful quotation telling us telling to the his followers not maximum allowed but minimum necessary and you should go for not maximum allowed but minimum necessary we are people who are supposed to live on minimum necessary not maximum allowed many things are allowed but all these those things are not necessary for our life and we should go for a close scrutiny whether all th those things are necessary for our life so francis is a responsibility a responsibility to live poor live as poor a option for the poor i think the franciscans are known like especially capuchins are known for their poverty and you should all pray for especially for franciscans to live as poor option for the poor and the second uh, you know the point what i want to make is he is a rebel francis is a rebel perhaps a gentle revolutionary to the church and you will never see in the history that he makes not even a single word as a criticism to the authority but his life was a criticism to the whole church 
not by word but by his life and he made it and we have the responsibility <coughs> we have the responsibility to criticize church not by word but by life may god bless us all through the intercession of uh, saint francis and the last uh, quotation as uh, narrated here brothers we have not begun let, we have not begun let us begin again we have reached nowhere let's begin again perhaps that is uh, the only message that uh, francis can give to us uh, we have not begun let's begin again may god bless you all thank you When he was approaching his last moments and the light eternal was taking the place of the temporal light that was being withdrawn, he showed by an example of virtue that he had nothing in common with the world. Let me be laid naked on this cold floor that I may wrestle naked the naked enemy. I have done what was mine to do. May Christ teach you what you are to do. This habit has been lent to you by me I take away from you all authority to give it to anyone else
have never seen anyone with such spirit of poverty. Meanwhile, Francis asks a brother that bread be brought to him. He was recalling that most holy supper of Jesus with his disciples. Brother Leo, bring me a loaf of bread. Father, here is the loaf of bread you asked for. Most High, Almighty Father, you created all things, both physical and spiritual. Bless this bread through your Son and through your Holy Spirit. that remained with him before his death, Francis, with falling voice, he intoned Psalm 142. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I shewed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld 
but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said. Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver, deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. O oh, my sister death, come and embrace me. It is you who is going to introduce me to eternal life. Francis, in a dream, visualizes and welcomes death. She, to whom no one willingly opens the door, presents herself. And Francis, the little poor man who so loved the Lord, received her courteously. As Francis dies, the brothers see with holy joy his hands and feet pierced with lambs. They saw the true image of the lamb, for he seemed as though he had recently been taken down from the cross, and gradually his spirit moved above to be united with his master. At the death of Francis, the creation bewailed and bitterly mourned at the loss of their friend. Thus Francis, poor and humble, enters heaven rich. Let us now kiss the relic of St. Francis, our father.
to wait. I request to wait. Not ever. Just request to wait for some time. Dear brothers and sisters, please give them a bleak clap. <laughs> and, I, and I hope one day we'll become the follower of Christ. Secondly, I would like to thank Father Gigio for giving us a beautiful message on the occasion of this Franciscan transit. Thank you, Father Gigio. <laughs> Secondly, I would like to thank all our youth who, in spite of their busy, busy scheduled work, they were here even at night till 11 and 12 working here. So I thank you, all of you, your youth. <laughs> Thirdly, I would like to thank choir members. Even they are not free. They are already in the fat, but in spite of that, they were here to support us. Thank you, St. Clair Choir. Thirdly, where are the parents of these boys? Parents, please come forward. Please come forward, the parents. Yay! Awesome. The narrators, please come here. Even you all are part of it. Narrators. Please, I am very grateful to your pa parents because in spite of their exam, you never said no to the work of God. You allow your children to participate in it. And this is something, it has to come from the family. So I thank parents for encouraging your children to work in God's vineyard. Thank you very much. Then we have three narrators. Can you come forward? Yeah. <laughs> and one of the youngest narrator, Garrett Sreya. Um, so I thank all, 
I thank all three of you. Thank you very much. And I must never forget the two men behind the stage who set the stage. Can you come forward, Albert and Ismail? who without sleeping, they had worked hard to set the stage. So thank you, Albert and Ismail, for your wonderful work. <laughs> then we have Siju and Ellen, who were here to, to video and to, photo, to take the photo. So I also thank both of them. And not the last, all your audience who has come forward. I announced so many times, but I was disappointed a little bit because in spite of an announcing, there were very few people. And I thank all of you who have come forward to support these youngsters. So thank you very much. And I forgot one important person among the youth who took the lead to lead all this. Shevin, please come, come on, forward. Shevin. Who has taken all the responsibility to distribute this work. He is also the president of the youth, so thank you. Anyone is left? Sheldon. Sheldon, Sheldon yeah. Who is behind the mics? Yeah, please come forward. So I've left anyone? Yeah, Ellie, my secretary. <laughs> Who always does the double work. Patricia Conrad, who took trouble for the transportation to get the boys. Yeah, please come forward. And I invite all the youth now, all the youth, come forward. Although they are very few, but they put up a lot of work. So I thank the youth, and I hope you will continue to do the same, that is to work in Lord's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Father, please stay there, stay there, stay there. Yeah, Father, please stay there. So yeah, I would really like to thank Father Roswin because in spite of his busy schedule, right, he has given us a chance to take up this project. Thank you, Father. Because even though he's busy, he's been here with the practice with the kids. They actually, you know, he was busy like, I'm not going to be there. And I'm like, Father, please be there. Like, no problem, I'll be there. <laughs> he's always there. He never says no for anything. If we need anything, he's always, he always says yes, right? Thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity and actually guiding us a lot. Even though we don't ask it, he pushes us, like, go, do it. You can do it. You know, encourages us a lot. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. 